family homeless. We'll have details on these stories and more next on Action News. Please stay with us. Oh boy, imagine your Carolina Chevy dealer. Yes to Chevy, yes. Live from Eastern South Carolina's news station, Bob Howick, Sue Abrams, Rick Henry on sports, and Steve Camps with the weather. This is Action News. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bob Howick. And I'm Sue Abrams. Myrtle Beach police are investigating the second murder in less than a week, this one a brutal stabbing. 46-year-old Earl Keller was found dead in his apartment late last night. He had been stabbed repeatedly and was apparently found by a neighbor. Police have no suspects or motives in the killing. A Georgetown steel worker fell to his death last night while working on a pipe. Authorities say 57-year-old Clint Dills fell about 15 feet, but no one knows what caused that fall. An autopsy is being conducted. A Lee County man was killed in a mobile home fire last night. 57-year-old Harry Moses Sr. and his brother Willie were asleep in their trailer when that blaze broke out. Now, fire officials believe it started somewhere in the middle of the home. Willie was asleep near the front and managed to escape, but Harry, he apparently was trapped in the flames. The cause of the fire is still undetermined, but the fire chief John Kelly says it may have been started by a kerosene heater. And in Darlington County, all five members of the Kenneth DuBose family are safe, but homeless tonight. Their small house was totally destroyed when one of their children apparently poured kerosene into a wood heater, causing an explosion. South Darlington County firemen were on the scene within minutes, but couldn't save the house. A burning propane tank spread flames to a combine, which had been parked very near the house. And in spite of all that, luckily, no one was hurt. Bob, fire investigators are still trying to determine what caused a blaze in Pamplico about noon today. The volunteer fire department wasn't able to save the big storage building at the corner of 5th and Walnut Streets. They believe it started in the rear of the building, which is owned by Johnny Ard of Pamplico. Again, no one was hurt. Without some rain soon, now we could see an increase in forest fires, and that has some state officials rather worried. Nearly two years ago, dry conditions fueled some of the most destructive woods fires ever seen in South Carolina. The situation is not yet critical, but District Ranger Jimmy McLaughlin urges everyone to be careful. Uh, trying to do some uh, litter burning and cleaning of uh, yard areas, fields, and possibly even some woodland. However, I, I emphasize again, if you're going to do any of this burning, to please take every precaution and uh, let the Forestry Commission be notified of it. January is traditionally the start of the fire season, so to speak. For South Carolina Forest. A Marion woman today was able to escape from her wrecked car moments before it caught fire. The Highway Patrol says 74 year old Hallie Powell of Evans Road was heading west on US 76, eight miles east of Florence. She apparently blacked out, went off the highway, and ran over a pine tree. Windy Hill volunteer firefighters put out the blaze in just minutes, and Mrs. Powell is now in stable condition at McLeod Regional Medical Center in Florence. Miraculously, a North Carolina man was not seriously injured after the truck he was driving was hit by a seaboard freight train. The Highway Patrol says 38-year-old Alton Thomas was trying to cross the tracks when the northbound train crashed into his rental truck, cutting it in half. Thomas was treated for minor injuries and released from a Florence hospital, but the Highway Patrol has charged him with disregarding a railroad crossing. The Conway NAACP is still boycotting Mayor Ike Long's restaurants, but that may not last much longer. A settlement between Long and the civil rights group should be announced sometime this week. Now, after a meeting today with the NAACP president, H.H. H. Singleton, Long says much progress has been made since the racial remarks that started the whole controversy. And I feel like that, that maybe we're heading in the right direction to, for, for his group, to uh, participate and help Conway to be better. Uh, and I feel like if we, if we hadn't gotten to this, that we wouldn't be helping Conway. The NAACP is expected to give the city a list of recommendations tomorrow to be adopted. Private erosion experts gave a warning today to Grand Strand Oceanfront property owners. They say if expected high tides this week are accompanied by high winds, parts of the beach could be devastated. Valerie Calhoun talked with those experts today. Valerie, what did you find out? Well, Sue, one expert says Myrtle Beach can expect major coastal flooding. 
while Garden City can look forward to condominiums toppling into the ocean. Now that's if and only if strong winds come in with the high tides that are expected for this week. Now even without the wind, the beaches which have already been battered by the northeaster will lose a lot of sand. So a lot of property owners were taking efforts to protect, to protect their beach. A team of coastal experts say sand dune erosion has left many areas of the Grand Strand virtually defenseless against high tides and strong winds. And that's even worse news in light of the extreme high tides that are predicted for this week. In that you've already had a storm a month ago that lowered the whole beach system along South Carolina and left the dune system with a vertical face on it and a lot of areas that are heavy, heavily developed with a vertical sand cliff ranging from four to six feet high that's the most vulnerable condition you can have for an additional storm event. Because the tides are a result of a rare positioning of the sun, moon, and the earth. And if those tides are accompanied by strong winds, Semple says we're in trouble. So the worst scenario would be high pressure area to the north, low pressure area to the south, elevated storm tides, and a vertical sand cliff fronting most of your community. If that particular scenario comes together, Katie, bar the door. Fortunately, the weather service is not predicting strong winds. However, many oceanfront property owners are still getting ready for the tides. We're putting some extra sandbags out here, uh, primarily to, if we have another real high tide, to sort of break the energy of the wave before it gets to the base of, the, of what's left of our dune here at the Sheraton. Team Marine is a division of coastal erosion control. They have effectively controlled erosion on beaches in Florida. Project development teams for coastal erosion control are working in Myrtle Beach now. Now they're trying to help owners, property owners, prevent shore erosion in the future. Although they say it's too late to help protect any damage from this week's tide. Sue? Thanks, Valerie. Uh, Steve Capps joining us now to tell us if, in fact, there is a very big chance of those high winds hitting the ground. Not a big, not a big chance. In fact, they are predicting the winds to be out of the northwest and shifting to north and northeast over about the next 24 hours. About 10 to 15 uh, knots is about all they're expecting. But Thursday, there is a possibility. Now, it's less than 50 percent. It is not a probability. I want to emphasize that. But of course, I want to uh, I want to say there is a possibility because, uh, well, as he was just saying, they are almost defenseless on some areas of the beach there. So I want to be prepared. For What's that. the cause of this uh, high tide situation at this time of year? Like it's an unusual, like once in a generation, alignment of the sun, earth, and moon in such a way that the sun is very close. To, uh, the earth is very close to the sun. And and the moon is very close to the earth and they're aligned in such a way that the gravity is a little bit greater and uh, the astronomical tides therefore are about a foot or a little bit more above normal. So since the moon controls the tides uh, so to speak then that's going to change it all. That's what it's going to be. Okay well maybe we'll find out some more a little bit later. Okay. All right thank you. We'll be back in just a minute. Better hurry, the great Ford year-end countdown lasts only one more day at your Carolina Ford dealers. This week they're featuring the built fun tough Ford Bronco 2, and they've got plenty of 4x2s and 4x4s in stock. Some can save you over $1,500 when you buy a special factory option package. And remember, Uncle Sam lets you write off your sales tax for only one more day. So get your local Carolina Ford dealer's best deal by tomorrow, and save hundreds during the Ford year-end countdown. Have you got yourself a case of the winter blahs? Well, we've got news for you. Classes will be starting soon at Francis Marion College for the spring semester. Open registration will be held January 9th. For information about how you can attend, call the Office of Admissions at Francis Marion College. I'm Mike Scott of Beck Ford Lincoln Mercury in Myrtle Beach. I'll give you the best deal you've ever had on a new Ford. We have 3.9% financing on new Ford Escort, EXP, or Mercury Lynx. 3.9% financing or a $300 factory rebate on your purchase. We're committed to bring you the lowest price, highest quality, and most dependable service anywhere. Shop any dealer anywhere, but before you buy, check with Beck.